Um, there was also some uh, homework that was given to me by some members. Um, Senator Sen asked me questions about um, participation in the medical uh, marijuana program in Arizona, and I didn't have those, those statistics in front of me. I, I did retrieve them. Um, this, these are the numbers that were true as of uh, last August, so it's, it's about what, five, five months old. Um, the breakdown demographically, individuals between 18 and 30, 24.5% of, um, of the card issuance, 41 to 55 is 21.4%, 51 to 60 is 15.6%, 61 to 70 is 15.1%, 71 to 80 is 5.4%, and 81 and older is just, just under 1%. So that, that's, that's currently the demographic breakdown under Arizona's laws. Um, and I'll yield to my friend. What, excuse me. Uh, would Senate, Senator, Senator yield for Charles a question? Charles and Senator Sam, what purpose do you rise? See if the Senator would yield for a question. Senator yields. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Do you have in that particular, and I'm not sure if we're looking at the same data. I'm looking, I have the data directly from the government, uh, their 2021 data, what percentage of those uh, cardholders claimed chronic pain? I believe that's in the, no in the 90s. I don't have the exact figure, but the, over to your 94 point, the overwhelming majority of individuals um, have chronic pain. Um, but but what, what's important to understand there as well is chronic pain is also something that is often associated with the other qualifying conditions. For instance, if you have Crohn's disease, or if you've got wasting syndrome, or if you've got, um, you know, the, the pain is sort of a common denominator in a lot of those qualifying conditions. So it's important to go down, and if you ask the question, you know, as our bill does, I mean, unlike Arizona's bill, what our bill does is say, you can't just say chronic pain, you've got to then tie it to the etiology of that pain, and what is the underlying condition that gives rise to it. So, so I guess I would make that point, is that because I'm aware of the fact that chronic pain is the overwhelming reason it is, it is authorized. And I wanted to make sure in this bill that, because pain can be a subjective thing. Somebody can come in it and say, is as a you subjective, said, subjective thing. thing. And it is a subjective thing, which is why in this bill, it requires a physician to say they have, they have diagnosed objectively an underlying condition, qualifying condition that is resulting in that pain. So I guess I would just make that distinction between our law and the laws of a lot of other states. This, this law really goes above and beyond, what, and now it's 37 states. Mississippi just yesterday finalized the reconciliation process, and um, uh, so they're the 37th state that have legalized it. But, but again, and I'm happy to, to answer questions and to talk about what the experiences in other states have been, but I always want to qualify that by saying our bill is different, and, and it's different for a reason. It's different because I think this is the sort of bill that South Carolinians want, I, and, and so I just would make that point. But I, but I take your point about chronic pain. I understand, and I do wish that I had um, my assistants actually putting together a notebook for me right now, so I don't have it right in front of me. But did I hear you say what I what I read yesterday was um, 30 and under were the vast majority of the card holders claiming chronic pain? That that that's not true. There's there's 28,041 card holders between 18 and 30. Um, out of the total of 114,182 cards, so that translates into 24.5 percent of card holders are between the ages of 18 and 30. How many of the 18 and 30 group, which arguably is the healthiest demographic, is claiming chronic pain? I don't have that cross tab, but I would infer that since chronic pain is the overwhelming condition, I would say that probably corresponds with this as, to that group as well. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and members, I just passed out because there was, there was a question yesterday. I kept talking about um, the states that had, had legalized um, uh, cannabis for med medical purposes. I just had distributed um, materials to give you an idea um, of, of what those states are so that you can kind of view and understand what I'm meaning. Um, and just in your mind or even in your desk, if you have a highlighter, you can shade in Mississippi in green and that it um, approved medical cannabis yesterday.